Running on two hours of sleep really is something else. Here I am, trying to record a video. The things I do for you guys, things I do for myself, readings. Ladies and gentlemen, today, The Legend of Heroes, Trails of Cold Steel, Northern War, Episode 5, hopefully, and I mean hopefully, I am not too brain dead to actually pay attention. Last episode, we, uh, we saw Reen, my boy, our boy, our good boy Reen, yeah, appeared and, uh, saved Lavi, I guess, and in the end, Lavi found out that he was, in fact, the hero of Erebonia. Now, I had a couple of problems with the previous episode. However, it was still a pretty decent episode. Um, now, last we checked, Reen flew off. So most likely we're going to go back to Lavi and her group and see what happens when they return to North Ambria. At least, I think that's what's gonna happen. They did say that they were going back home, but we shall see. Might as well get right into it. Let's get right into the episode! Snowy peaks. Snowy mountains. Okay, another train. Oh, they're showing the whole map. Made for Raquel, the entertainment city. A place filled with glamour and lights. A place that never sleeps. Then came the imperial capital of Heimdall. Okay, so it seems like they are just going around in Erebonia. I thought they might be going to back to uh, Northumbria, but maybe, I guess, I guess not. I mean, they did say last episode that they were going back, but I guess... A little too early. It's filled with all different kinds of vehicles. Ashton Chevalier plays a critical role. Yeah. Next, the industrial metropolis of Luar. Why is this not? There are moving stairs installed all over the city, and mysterious elevators that could carry several people at once. Indeed. I knew the Empire was wealthy and powerful, but it was still shocking to see it all for myself. Each place had something else in common, too. It was hero this and hero that, no matter where we went. Everyone only knows him as the Ashen Chevalier. Indeed they do. If hero do. exists by that title alone, then he doesn't exist. I wouldn't be so sure. We know far too little about the situation to jump to conclusions. He's almost like a symbol. Starters, can anyone tell me why we're all the way up here in the mountains? We're on our way to Ymir to follow up on the rumors we heard about it being the hero's hometown. I'm surprised that they're going to Ymir. People are definitely going to know who Reen is there, but, uh, yeah. Mountain villages. A must-visit spot for maidens. I'm talking hot springs! Indeed, I've been there. I've been there. Tucked in the mountains of the Isengard Range, you'll find the hot springs paradise of Ymir. Legend says that its natural hot springs can cure any kind of illness, and people from all over visit in droves for their health benefits. It works wonders for your skin, too. This is so weird. Because, like, I've seen this in the Probably games. Because it's the middle of the I've been there. Seeing this in anime form is so freaky. It also snows here. Apparently, the climate stays cool all year round, and in the winter, people come for the snowy landscape and various winter sports. The Phoenix Wings. This is where we're Hot Springs. Uh -huh. I would what know. I've about? been there. This place costs ten times more than the other ends. I'll settle for one night. Huh? And where are you getting the Mira? Easy. The two of you can camp outside. <laughs> I feel like that is not fair. The guys need some hot spring time as well. So the hot spring's gone cold? That's what the staff said. Ymir Manju? They say it's so delicious you haven't lived a full life if you don't try one before you die. How much, ma'am? Looks like they're all sold out. What? For real? Not exactly. Oh no. They're going to have to do tasks. As you can see, it's freezing in here. 
There's some sort of problem that needs fixing. It's a real problem. The kitchen channels the wellspring's water for heat, giving them a really unique and exquisite flavor. But lately... No, this sucks! I want to take a hot springs bath and I want to eat manju too! Sorry about this. It's never happened to us before. So why did everything suddenly turn cold? We believe something must have happened to the wellspring up in the mountains, but that area is infested with monsters. So, if we go and fix up the hot springs, maybe you could scrounge up a reward? Huh? <laughs> Phoenix Wings full course suite, package with dinner, beauty care... This sounds yes, very, very it's familiar, I'm not gonna lie. This sounds very familiar. I mean, this is basically what the games are about. If you haven't played the games, if you haven't seen people play the games, this... This right here is what the games are about. You go around, doing tasks, for other people, killing monsters. You don't do it because you want to, you do it because the main characters are goody two-shoes, and, uh... I mean, it's Reen, right? Come on. Of course, he's gonna do all the tasks. ...things would help not only us, but the entire village. We'll go talk to Mr. Baggins about this, but I can't imagine he'd say no. You're on! Leave all your hot spring troubles to the best of the best! Okay, good to go. You can carry the supplies, Lobby, and I'll deal with the monsters. Cool. Well, take care then. Aye, aye, sir. Mission start. <laughs> Only the two of them? Okay, now I, I was right. thinking the entire party was going to go, but... What do you say? Maybe take a little stroll down the ski slopes or... Hmm? Hey. Hmm. I saw something interesting written in the guidebook. If you dig near the riverbanks around here, you may hit a hot spring. No way. You don't mean... What do you say you and I go and find us one? I wonder if they were trying to show something with uh, a bunch of those people in the shop talking. A bunch of those villagers. Come on, Lobby, sing along with me. Hot springs, hot springs. Are you sure this is the right way, Asaria? Of course, this is a shortcut only the locals know about. They mentioned it'd be a rough trek, but it's worse than I thought. Well, looks like we found the problem. What the heck? This is seriously crazy. What's up? How would a hot spring just freeze over? See that? Hmm. Must be There's Septium. a monster. But why would Septium be in a place like this? Does the reason really matter? Regardless, if this bad boy's the cause, we'll just have to get rid of it. Septium? Time to dig, Lobby! You first, though. I am a little... Okay. Turn into a bunch of Before we continue, I, I want to say that I am a little bit surprised how long they're kind of... Or how much, I guess you could say, time they're wasting. On these I kind of expected like a small little like I want to say five minutes of them kind of getting acquainted with the uh, locals and then moving on to like actually trying to learn about potentially the Ashen Chevalier but they've gone on this weird side quest of getting the hot springs to work you know it's a little bit weird not gonna lie out here investigating well springs and trying to dig up hot springs all to help out Erebonians I feel like this calls for some my blade calm as still the water. If you don't know what that means, uh just never mind. Trails joke. <laughs> What's that? Disinfectant for if we get wounded. Marty gave it to me. Nice. Looks effective. Now, we just wait for the flame to go out, shoot the crystal to break it, and then... Hot springs, hot springs, flash around. Oh no, monsters. Uh, uh, what in the world? Uh, oh no. It's a tentacle monster. Hey, I packed some explosives in the bag! Go get them and bring them to me! Got it! Come on, where are they? Area. I don't see them. Where did you? Uh. 
What the fuck just happened? What what even is that? Hot springs, by the way. A, a pool of hot springs, by the way. With no means of escape, instead of living freely and honestly like the maiden I am. I could oh my have God, lived you are. my life on the runway and experience true love like every other girl. Alas. I just had to go and become a Northern Jaeger. You didn't do it to save people? <laughs> Why are you going after ruin it? I was having a moment with myself. You can complain later. This isn't just regular ice. It's a monster camel. No fucking system. shit, dude. And it doesn't look like we have the time to send you to go get back up. I guess that means you're my only hope then. I believe in you, okay? What's with the silence? You didn't even help me out once the entire way here. Wait, are you mad at me? You've got it all wrong. I just figured you'd have no trouble getting past those rocks since you're so amazing at everything. But you laughed. I mean, yeah, but not at you. Be back. No, no, wait, I'm sorry. I apologize. Please don't leave me. <laughs> Fuck, work with me here, Lobby. We can discuss this later. Yep, pierce through. You can't just open fire out of the blue like that? Thought you believed in me. What if they'd shot all the way through and into me? Yeah, but they didn't, did they? <sighs> You're even more unhinged than I thought. Whenever this thing is attacked, it protects itself with those thorns. It's like a weird hedgehog or something. There should be a sniper attachment somewhere in there. Uh, I definitely remember packing one. There should be a sniper attachment? Found. Okay. Attach it to the end of your handgun, and you'll be able to use it as a rifle. The case that was next to it in the bag should have special rounds inside. Uh, kinda disagree. Uh, last time I checked, just putting a scope on a pistol does not make it a sniper, and does not make it able to shoot sniper bullets or sniper rounds. Grab one of the gold ones. That's kind of heavy. That's because it's a custom-made hammerhead bullet, and it's made out of an extra hard steel alloy. Mineral crystals are incredibly hard, but of course, a nice heavy impact at just the right point can slice through them like an axe through firewood. At least, that's what my sources say. It should work on this monster since it takes on the mineral's properties. I'm surprised. So you actually can listen to people sometimes. Shut up. I guess these two are having like a bonding moment. I mean, I'm not complaining, honestly. Actually, enjoy. Especially if uh, the sniper girl happens to be a spy. Then it's like, ooh. I'm, I'm always a fan whenever you have a uh, undercover person, I guess. Like a, like a bad guy that gets to know the main character. The good guy and the bad guy kind of become friends. When it's revealed that they're the bad guy, then it's like... It creates a very unique dynamic. You don't really know whether or not... They're gonna be redeemed or not. It's just fun. I imagine we'll only get one shot at this. Can you see its core? Yeah, I see it. Good. And at the same time you fire, I'll shoot the septium as well. Hey, Lobby? Yes? When we get back, let's eat some Ymir Manju. What's this have to do with the Manju? The Empire has yummy food to eat, places to shop for stylish clothes, amazing parties, hot springs, everything. And they're just a normal part of life for people here. It's sad that we don't have it like that back in Northambria. Aceria. I mean, what did we even become Northern Yeagers for anyway, you know? We constantly put our lives on the line. We literally eat dirt and bullets to make a living. If a country needs people like us fighting for it to barely survive, what kind of future do you think it has? I'm being dramatic. What I mean is... You have to try Ymir Manju at least once before you die? Exactly right. Here we go. The tension is building. Three. Two. I'm gonna cock you right here. Uh, she, uh, the sniper girl, Isari, I think. She genuinely seems to be, or at least cares about somewhat, 
about Northambria, I feel like. But, you know, again, you know, if she is a spy, we haven't really seen any any more signs that she might be a spy besides that one moment in uh, the second episode, I think. We haven't really seen any signs, but I still suspect her. Anyway. Three, two, one. Fire. Oh, it's one of those fucking... Yep. Those guys, honestly, they suck. They basically avoid every attack. They're weak, but they avoid every attack. Manager, the hot springs back to normal. I wonder if Reen's gonna show up. I would not be surprised. This is it. This is what a hot spring's supposed to look like. Feels amazing, right? Sure. And this should be ready soon. Wow, it smells so good. Let's dig in. Thanks. Thoughts? It was definitely worth the trouble. You see? I think I'll have another one. Can you teach me more? Huh? Like about guns and clothes and food. Guns, and clothes, and food. <laughs> A woman's best friend. Once we get out of the bath, we'll have I guess. Nice They seem to be getting along better. Yeah, guess our luck did turn around. Usually, when you say our luck turned around, then I'll contact Martin something Squad bad's gonna happen. To Legrand in the south next. Understood, Master Glark. Of course, my pleasure. Now then. Oh, son of a bitch. I should have known. I should have known. I mean, I kind of did know. Well, I mean, not not exactly, but I kind of suspected. You know, I said, what's her name? Uh, Jaina might have connections to the society, and I was fucking right. I guess even Rogan is, uh... I guess they... Show me something that I can't possibly look away from. I guess they borrowed their strength. Oh, it's already fucking over, Jesus. Well, I mean, uh, man, it be what it do. Can douchebag here? I know some stuff about the Northern War. You know, information that I've gotten from uh, Cold Steel 3 that I'm playing right now, but, and I kind of know what happens, roughly, but uh, even I didn't know that Campanella here I think that was the name, actually. I, I'm not completely sure. I'm not 100% sure. If I'm wrong, then I'm wrong, but, like, I think I'm right. But, yeah, I, I did not know Campanella was involved. I suppose I suppose he's gonna be the the main bad guy, I guess, this time around. Or at least, you know, the, the guy in the shadows. The one who uh, is providing Jaina and Rogan and, you know, the Northern Jaegers with assistance. In general, overall, I think Jaina here, Jaina and Rogan are gonna be the main, I guess, bad guys. Well, maybe not bad guys, but like the, the, the main generals of Northambria as we go into this war. But yeah, in the end, Campanella, in the end, this guy is more of the, the mastermind. Um, I'm not gonna lie, this episode felt like episode three again. A lot of, I guess you could say, filler. And that's kind of what it felt like. They came to Ymir, like, very early in the episode. We saw, like, a couple of shots of them going through different cities and stuff. You know, Heimdall. Oh yeah, he, there was this as well. Ashen Chevalier plays critical role in Outlook of Erebonian Empire. Delegation leader to meet with Chancellor on Giliath Osborn. But yeah, they, they got to Ymir very early, and... Well, I, I suppose I can just say it, like, Ymir is the hometown of Reen, and maybe they're going to do something with that next episode, but, uh, 
I kind of expected more from this episode, especially with a, especially with them going to Ymir and actually arriving here. They came here for a reason. And then they went on this whole hot springs trip and uh, found out that hot springs are kind of broken down. And then they decided to like go and fix them. I suppose I did like getting to know her a little bit more. Maybe not exactly getting to know, but like at least more bonding time between her and uh, Lavi. You know, these two just kind of went and uh, investigated the source of the the hot springs. But yeah, I definitely felt more of a filler episode. Um, kind of a side quest. It is nice to see that you know, characters actually think about stuff like this, where, you know, Northambria is very poor, I guess you could say, and Erebonia is like a prosperous empire, and, you know, they have all kinds of shit, all kinds of, I guess you could say, luxuries that uh, most other places don't have. Country bumpkins, right, come into the big city. You may know about all these, like, technologies and whatnot, but you don't really have easy access to them normally and then you come to the big city and you're like holy shit everything is like accessible everything is readily available this is this is great we saw similar stuff in episode three as well where they kind of like went around experiencing things especially lavi right i believe tally and lavi had a, like a talk where they talked about i guess you know that their country is a lot poorer and here again we see the two of them talking here saying like how north Ambry is is just kind of kind of poor you know like erebonia here has everything you know people who live here have these luxuries every day and just that's just part of their normal lives for a moment i even thought that uh while she was talking about this that maybe lavi would be like i guess upset with her talking like that because I mean, Lavi loves North Ambria, right? Someone's essentially saying that this evil empire that we're here to spy on is just better than your home country, your hometown. It's like, but I suppose even she, even Lavi has to see at this point that, let's be honest here, the Erebonian Empire is just better than North Ambria, right? For the common person. Maybe she didn't get angry because she realizes this. Or maybe they just didn't think of it. I don't know. But uh, it is nice to see that these characters are thinking these things. But yeah, I definitely liked like these two bonding. Unfortunately, I feel like uh, it could have been done with some actual storyline. This just felt a little way too filler to me. Just like the whole clown thing, it felt like this storyline, this, this hot spring fixing storyline, just has nothing to do with anything else. It's just a one-off throwaway story. Now, it was better than the clown one because I guess I actually kind of liked their conversations here the two girls as conversations but uh not much to say you know in terms of character bonding i guess it was a good episode but in terms of storyline and progression of the main storyline which if you know me when you have a show and you're telling a story you gotta move forward you gotta progress the story you can't have just filler episodes especially when you have like 12 13 episodes now, I don't know how long the Northern War is going to go here, but I'm assuming it's going to be like 12, 13 episodes. And the fact is, honestly, even if it was like 24, 25, 26 episodes, filler just is not the answer. Like, unless you have hundreds of episodes, don't do filler. It's filler is a bad idea. Filler, filler, no, no. Filler, bad, bad. Filler, very bad. Very, very doo-doo. Doo-doo, mega doo-doo. Do not do filler ultimately what i'm trying to say is filler is just very bad but yeah i mean that's kind of what it felt like which is a big filler episode as i said i did like the bonding between the two girls i feel like you can just do this type of bonding following the main storyline the other two uh, they didn't really do anything i thought you see here they're like looking at this group of people i thought here they might have something going on with the villagers and again maybe next episode right i don't know maybe but uh nothing came of it um but yeah i mean literally this episode was just very uneventful I'm not gonna lie to you 
very uneventful episode. I suppose the best thing about this episode was Lavi and uh, Asaria's interactions. And I think, you know, Lavi and her really honestly work really well together. Like in terms of their dialogue and like just kind of their friendship. Um, and then we are left off here with, with Jaina here talking to Galark, I guess. And it seems like we don't know if the rest of the uh, Northambrian government is aware of what's going on here. Because I'm thinking they went behind their backs. I mean, if we look here, what is what are these, right? Well, we already know what these are, but uh, I mean, at least I do. But yeah, it seems like Rogan and Jaina are going behind the government's backs and kind of like getting the society's help, which <sighs> never really turns out well. But I suppose we shall see. Um, I'm I am still hoping that they are do gonna do something, something in Ymir, maybe even run into Reen, I'm, I'm telling you. It is his hometown, so it's like, it's very possible. It would be a little weird if they if they came to Ymir and they just never found anything out about Reen. I don't know, it would just be kind of weird. That's pretty much it. I mean, this, this episode was very much like the third one, where it's like a bunch of filler, honestly. Not much to say about it. We had some, you know, nice bonding moments, but uh, ultimately it was just very filler. Very much fillerish. The storyline, the side quest, the little side quest that they went on, it's just too much of a side quest. It, it reeks of a side quest, of a completely meaningless side quest. This was essentially the equivalent of their beach episode. At least that's what it felt like. Maybe, maybe they have... 24 episodes i want to i want to hope that they have 24 episodes maybe i should look it up my anime list says it's 12 episodes in other words i feel like this was a wasted episode if you have 12 episodes you don't waste one on a complete side quest that's just how it is in any case i hope you enjoyed my reaction to the legend of heroes trails of cold steel northern war episode 5 and I'll, uh, I'll see you next time, in episode 6, I suppose. Hopefully, I, I, you know, I'm hoping that they kind of move into the war soon, because these side quests, ah, uh, ah, uh, along with the third episode now, with the clown, and now this, they're kind of, they're taking things too lightly, too slowly, too much filler stuff. I guess we'll see. Until next time, see ya.